Uh, hi. I'm here to talk about the puzzler. And you might be wondering, who's the puzzler? Uh, well, 60s Batman had the Riddler as a big villain in the show. He was actually the villain that appeared the most in the first season. And Frank Gorshin was very popular as the Riddler. However, Frank Gorshin was so popular that he became busy. He wasn't available to come back for the second season. So what were they going to do? How are they going to get the Riddler in there without Frank Gorshin? Well, they tried to have a substitute character, and that was the Puzzler. Now, there is a Superman villain called the Puzzler, so I guess you can consider this uh, an obscure Superman villain being adapted into Batman, which is very interesting. A very interesting that a Batman villain, I mean, sorry, a Superman villain kind of appeared in Batman. It was the puzzler of all villains. And uh, not, none of the uh, episodes of the George Reeves show actually adapted any of the Superman villains, I think. I don't even think they, used, they didn't even use Lex Luthor, so I guess this is the first adaptation of a Superman villain in a TV show. And it was the puzzler that they adapted. Oh, well, there was also a Superman cartoon in the 60s, but at least in live action. The first one to get it adapted in a live action show, because then Lex Luthor was in a Superman movie serial. It's complicated, but basically, uh, the puzzler it was kind of used as a substitute for the Riddler. And because of that, a lot of people just think, okay, it's just a lesser Riddler. It's just used as a substitute. You know, they don't like him. Uh... I just kind of like to view the puzzler as his own character. I really like Maurice Evans' performance. He uh, was very entertaining as the puzzler and felt different for the Riddler because, of course, the Riddler is delightfully over the top. Well, the puzzler kind of has this more, he's kind of this more dignified older man. He kind of has this more refined sophistication towards him with a fancy way of speaking and acting. And that helped him feel different from the Riddler. It felt like a different character to me with a similar gimmick, but didn't just feel like the exact same character. He did feel unique and different enough, at least to me. And I really enjoyed him. I really enjoyed his costume, a very colorful looking uh, outfit. I really liked his design and how he acted. And yes, he was there to fill in for the Riddler, but he didn't just feel like just a lame, lazy, uh, unoriginal copy. He felt like an entertaining villain in his own right and one that I really did like. And I think he worked in 60s Batman very well, and he was just used in the one-two parter. After that, they decided to just have another actor play the Riddler. They had John Astin play the Riddler, and then Frank Gorshin came back. So the puzzler was just used in, in that one-two parter, but I really liked what they did with the puzzler in that two-parter. And I think he was a fun villain, and I think it would be fun to have a Riddler puzzler team up. Maybe they could even team up with Clue Master, you know, have the three of them team up. That could be fun. So yeah, I like what they do with the puzzler in 60s Batman.